Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Uh, today's guest is Kathy Lang, Veteran Services Officer at the City of Framingham. She's going to be here to talk to you about benefits available to veterans, their spouses, their widows, their dependent children. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. Uh, and I'm Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us at Myrick O'Connell. We're the biggest firm outside of Boston. We're located in, in we have offices in Westboro, close by. But this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. Uh, their goal in life is very simple. Um, they want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. I deal with Frank and Mary all the time as an elder law attorney. For the purposes of this show, Frank and Mary want to know, and maybe you want to know, the people you need to know and the pr programs you need to know about if you, like them, want to stay right here in Framingham for the rest of your life. So, Frank, so, so um, Grace, uh, O'Donnell always finds me these great, these, great co these great folks to interview. Grace, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Kathy Lang, the Veteran Services Officer for the City of Framingham. That's exciting. So welcome, Kathy. Thank and you I very think much. We just, we, we just met a little bit before the show, and uh, really thanks for taking the time. Grace manages to find everybody, and as we were talking a little bit about before the show, one of the purposes of the show yeah. is to let Frank and Mary just get to see you so that at the end of the show, they're saying to themselves, oh, I could talk to her, right? So thank you very much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Kathy, since you are new to Framingham, I think people would be interested in knowing what branch of the service you served in. Well, thank you very much, Grace. Um, yes, I am new to Framingham. I've been doing this uh, position now for about two and a half months. I am an Army veteran from the Vietnam era, uh, right towards the end of the Vietnam peacetime era. And I was a medical specialist at Fitzsimmons, Medi Fitzsimmons Army Medical Center in Denver, Colorado. So when the Vietnam vets were coming back, I was the one to you know, help them um, with their trauma, with um, their invisible wounds, their um, physical wounds. And I was the one that came right in contact with them to you know, help them through the process of getting better. Wow, terrific. I'm sure you have a, a lot of very compelling stories that you could tell. Um, and, I, and I bet that that puts you really in tune with a lot of people who over the last 10 years have come back from, I mean, my, my son went to Afghanistan twice. So, you know, we, you, you talk to a lot of folks about things that they've gone through and more than anything to have a veterans agent, someone that they can really talk to. It's just a wonderful thing. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because you're absolutely right. These veterans coming back from Iran, Afghanistan, they're having a lot of invisible wounds that they don't know how to get across. And myself as a veteran service officer and my team, we help them get to the right resources. We really try to use active listening to help them figure out what exactly they're looking for so we can match them right the right person so that they can, we can help them. And that's basically what we do. We're resources for anybody that comes in. But um, I'm glad you brought up the Afghanistan, the veterans from Afghanistan. And I remember because that's a very, very critical point at this point in time. Mm. Yeah. And Kathy, I know there are a number of services that are available to veterans and their families. Are there some of those that you could touch on, some of the, the financial assistance, as well as some of the mental health services and you know, um, access to medical care from the VA system? Um, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Being from the city of Framingham and every, um, every state requires every city and town to maintain a Department of Veteran Services to be a resource for the veteran, the dependents, widows, et cetera. And we help them from state, local, federal, um, all facets of 
what their needs are. And you may have a veteran sitting at home saying, I just wonder if I'm, I can get a tax exemption or if I just wonder if what the medical benefits are. All they need to do is really pick up the phone, give us a call, and I'm more than happy to meet with them. But there's a whole range of resources we can help them with. Um, their dependents, we can help them with federal benefits. Perhaps somebody needs some aid and attendance at this point. Um, perhaps they're looking to get more, as I mentioned, the tax exemption, the medical benefits. We have a VA clinic here on Lincoln Street that we can set them up with and get medical attention. Um, you know, there's a whole range of services. And until we get a chance to talk to them and get them to talk more freely, that's when we really use our skills to drill down and help them with any of the resources that they need. We had a couple of veterans come in about their GI benefits and we reach out to the universities that they're going to school with and we help them figure out their benefits and how to get those. Um, we help them with, it, with health insurance and we help them guide their way towards Medicare or whatever sources they need. So um, yeah, that's really just offering a whole range of different thing, benefit services that we can help them with. Kathy, and I, I know Grace has got it's a set of questions, but there was something you just mentioned that I hadn't known about. There's some, there is actually some kind of veterans clinic in Framingham? There is. Um, it's on Lincoln Street, 61 Lincoln Street, and it's a VA walk-in clinic. Now, granted, they are tied into the Boston Clinic, so Jamaica Plain, Bedford, Brockton, but these, these veterans can go to the VA clinic and get an evaluation make it again, an appointment with a doctor and they can go from there to be, get the best resource that they can for their health needs. And that might be, that may be medical, psychiatric, whatever the case may be, but there's that first step. And what they can do is typically they come to my office. I will help them fill out a form um, to get them to that clinic. And then they make an appointment to that clinic and, you know, take it from there. And I just had no idea. I had no idea that there was that kind of service that was available without having to go into Boston. That's a big so, deal. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, granted, they may have to go into Boston because everything is tied to the Boston Jamaica Plain system. But it's a great starting point because, you know, typically when a veteran comes in, I said, look, have you been over to the clinic? Let me fill out. Let me help you fill out a form. Let's make you an appointment. They go over there. And then from there, it's just a it's a wonderful service for them to get started to get into the VA, VA um, health care. Kathy, a question I have is. Do you have a ready list of all veterans who live in Framingham or in order for somebody to be contacted, do they have to be the one who reaches out to you? That, you know, again, Grace, you're, you're asking some very good questions here because my starting out here in Framingham, I really want to do a really active outreach service to find the veterans that need help. Some of the veterans are just too proud to come in and talk to us or, you know, whatever. But yes, we have access to a list of veterans, but it's really, we don't want to force them to come in to see us, but I do want them to know that we're, that we're there. Um, I have currently right now, I'm working with probably about 40 to 50 active veterans on getting chapter 115 benefits and chapter 115 helps them with, um, if they're low or on their budgetary means or whatever, I help to see if they're qualified for chapter 115. But that's not just what we're doing here. If somebody comes in and wants some information about getting their dad's DD-214, um, helping them with burials, um, as I mentioned, the schooling, um, medals, whatever. I mean, they just kept the phone. But for me to, you know, I would love to reach out to them one by one because we believe there's currently about 2,200 active veterans in the city of Framingham. Mm, and that's, that's a lot, lot more veterans that, that I'm dealing with. Yeah. So to give people an order of magnitude, there are 2,200 that you estimate active veterans. How many veterans would you say are, act, are you actively working with right now? Or have you since you've started, you've been in for a couple of months. Um, you know, I've probably come in contact with maybe a hundred veterans um, but actively on a, actively on a month to month basis, I'd say actively about 50. So that's a whole lot less than the 2,200. Right. And Kathy, exactly. I would say we encounter a similar thing at the senior center where 
we don't always have phone numbers or emails to contact people to let them know what we have to offer. And so it helps us if people can make that initial reach out for us to know they are there and then we can fill them in on all that is available to them. To me, that seems like very much a similar role that you have. You have a wealth of programs and services that people can take advantage of, but until they contact you, they don't necessarily know what's available to them. And and that's exactly right. And just this month, I mean, we had, you know, flag day, we have veterans day coming up. We had the um, POW MIA, which I attended. We had another one where we dedicated a bridge to a veteran that, that, you know, passed away. So I'm trying to go out to all those things. So they see our face to say, wow, we do have an active veteran service officer that really wants to get out and see what the community is all about. And the Callahan Center as an outreach person, as an outreach center, you know, this is who I really want to partner with to say, you know, even when we're out and about shopping or because I come across you know, when I'm just shopping around the town, you're know, talking to elderly veterans who don't know that there are different services that could be like a tax exemption. There could be a federal benefit aid and attendance, which I can help them fill out the forms. You know, anything, you just really have to listen in to pick up on what they're looking for. Yeah. So um, I would love to reach out to the, all the 2,200 veterans. And I hope that with Veteran Days coming up, we are, we are having a um, a ceremony at the revitalization of the Veterans Memorial here in town on Veterans Day. And I want the veterans to know that this is a place where they can really kind of contemplate what the city of Framingham can offer them and that we're there for them. But it's all, it begins all with outreach and that's what I'm trying to really do more of. And the mayor has been great. She's been to every, everything that I've been through, um, everything, you know, all the different functions um, as well as, you know, the COO of the city of Framingham. So we're trying, we're trying to get more out there and especially with what's going on with Afghanistan. And then this brings to mind what happened with the Vietnam veterans. So, you know, there's a whole lot of different veterans, veterans that are out there that really just need somebody to know that they care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've done their service and now we want to do in return to them as, as a thank you for all that they endured. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know, Grace, you have a lot of questions. It, it saves, saves some time at the end, though. I want to I would really like to have Kathy talk a little bit about aid and attendance, because I think that's a it's a tremendous benefit that many seniors aren't aren't aware of the the potential for that benefit. Right. To really, really help them in a lot of different contexts. So and, and that's a key word, the potential, because there's a lot that goes into it regarding, you know, your income levels, your finance, what the federal government can offer. But it's a wonderful starting point to know that that benefit may be out there for them. And if not, you know, we can also try to help them with different resources to help them take care of their loved ones. And Kathy, I know there's also a vet center in the Saxonville part of the city. Can you give us a little information about that and what's available to people there? Yes, that's a a wonderful resource for us. Um, Dave Heinley, he was the one that runs it, is one of the um, counselors over there. And we have a lot of information at our office about it. We can always give out the number as well. I'm, I apologize, I don't have the number in front of me. But he offers um, resources for trauma, for PTSD, for anything that the vet is up against. And he has a lot of resources. He's tied to the Worcester Vet Center. Um, but it's amazing when I go over there, the comfort, how he makes you feel comfortable. I've seen him talk to the veterans over there and it's a wonderful circle of people that come in to see him. Um, but any veteran, I mean, I have so many veterans calling me to say, look, I need to talk to somebody. Well, I may be able to you know, make them feel comfortable or hold their hand, but David is the one that really has these skills to really drill down on what they need to help them get through this next phase of their lives. So that's more on the, the mental health or emotional aspect of things. That's correct. That's providing correct. that kind yes. of assistance. Yeah. That, that's great to know that's available. And fortunately more people are realizing that our mental health is just as important as our physical health, that we really need to look at the entire person and that, you know, if we are feeling depressed, that's not, 
uh, in any way a weakness on our part. It's that, you know, life has, you know, thrown various things at us and it, at various times it's difficult to cope. And just as you would see a doctor to fix a broken arm, if you're feeling these kind of emotional issues, go to a counselor, see how they can help you. Uh, I'm glad that more people are accessing that kind of a resource and not attaching any sort of stigma to it because there shouldn't be in, in this day and age. We know how how important mental health is. It, it, they really shouldn't, especially during this COVID pandemic time. I mean, socialization is very important. And people, when they're sitting at home, they're just, you know, reeling or just, you know, trying to take care of themselves themselves. And so often they just need somebody to talk to. And it may not have to be anything specific, basically, but just to, to talk to someone to know that there's somebody that cares, that there are resources out there. Um, you know, socialization is very important and to have somebody to know that you can go to. Yeah. And, and the other thing is not everyone has been in the service. So not everyone knows what these men and women have gone through but a counselor specifically at the vet center would be familiar with that and could relate to them and would have that those skills to be able to help them process what they're dealing with and feel, you know, come through on the other side of this. None of this needs to be a permanent situation for people. You know, you're, you're right. And I'm glad you brought up that as well. Um, when these guys come home or they're in the service, they don't know how to express to their wives or the loved ones what they've been through. And the wives, they have no idea. And just to bring this back to a personal level, I mean, my dad was in World War II um, with three of his brothers in Europe. And he liberated the camps with a, with a couple of his brothers. And I know even growing up with my father, he was a very quiet man. He was a very genteel man. And I just remember him taking the train into Boston with one of his brothers because he just needed to talk to somebody. So um, you just don't know what they're feeling and what they need to get out. Yeah. And Andy, I'm and curious, is there any um, um, kind of intergenerational program that's, that's dealing with kind of connecting the Vietnam folks with the folks that went, served in Afghanistan? Because I think that they're, they're, it, having watched the Afghanistan thing play out, there just seem to be some real similarities in terms of the kind of experiences that these guys may have faced having been in a very long conflict, you know, which ended not so great, you know, with a, with, with a, with a, with a, a lot of expectations that were high, but ended up kind of not being fulfilled. Right. And it, it just, it, I just, it just curious, as you were describing this, I was saying to myself, wow, I bet a lot of the older Vietnam folks remember a lot of going through a lot of this same stuff coming home, you know, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, I was me and Peter Harvell. Peter Harvell was the director of um, veteran services and he's semi retired right now. And we were talking about that because he saw a lot of things when he was in the service. And that's why, you know, personally, I think that these vet centers are so important, but we really don't have anything in Framingham at this point. Uh, but we'd like to try to bring that back because intergenerationally you have like World War II vets are still around. You got the Korean vets are still around and the Vietnam, they, they can all intermingle. And I, personally, I think they could probably help each other to know what they're each going through. Um, so that's one of the things that we definitely want to try to bring back and try to partner with some things that we can try to get everybody together you know, not formally, just like an informal setting where they can, you know, talk and whatever the case may be. Yeah. So I agree with you. But right now, I um, unless I'm missing something, I think we really need to make more of an active role to get that started, to get, bring that back. And Kathy, I know one issue for a lot of people is uh, property taxes. And I believe there are some specific exemptions for property taxes specific to veterans. Uh, can you talk a little bit about those? Um, that's why it all has to do with the different things they have. If they were, a, if they had a purple heart, um, you know, there, there are a lot of things surrounding that, that we would need to take a look at if they are live, if they can get tax exemptions. But um, Grace, I would like to, for them 
to put my number out so they could just definitely give us a call so I could work with them with the city clerk's office and see if they do qualify for the tax exemptions. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely have that on the, on the uh, screen for people to be able to contact you either by email or by phone so that they can get all those details and know based on their particular service, their type of injury, what kind of exemption they might be eligible for. And, I appreciate uh, that. and are there, uh, programs or services available as well to surviving spouses or dependent children of vets? There's there's some federal programs, yes. Um, But for me to just make a list, um, like for instance, we had had a veteran's wife, a deceased veteran's widow come in just yesterday and her husband was in Vietnam. And, you know, she's trying to see if, she can get some benefits. So we're, we're helping her with paperwork, filing a claim, going, going to um, get a fed, fill out the federal forms to put in the claim and follow and help her follow that through so we can see what we can get her down the road. Um, same with dependents. If there are any dependents, any adult dependents who are a, who, who has a, um, an ailment, I'm not sure if that's the right word, an ailment that was detected when they, their father or mother was in service, they may be able to get federal benefits. But again, it's a whole myriad of different things we need to go through to find out. Um, if we have somebody who, if we have some grandchildren and, you know, they're, uh, uh, excuse me, if they have like sons or daughters or people, kids in school age, and they're just looking for some resources, we can definitely reach out to different parties and, you know, help them. But it, again, it all depends on really me. To, and I hate to you keep using this word, but really active listening skills, having them come into the office, and we delve we delve down in everything to see we can possibly get them. I suppose that's the key is to, for every veteran to say to yourself, "Look, you're you're the veteran. You're not the you're not the person who is in charge of figuring out how the bureaucracy works. And this is a really complicated bureaucracy." <laughs> It's filled with a bunch of programs that have been passed over a long period of time by all kinds of different legislators and stuff, right? So there's not there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a kind of a hodgepodge. So what you really need is you need to walk into Kathy's office, explain who you are, and have Kathy see all of that through your eyes, right? So that she can kind of use, use her filter to be looking at all of these things and saying, oh, you know... Th- these are the things, these, you know, don't think that, don't walk in figuring you know what you want, right? You're walking yeah. in explaining to Kathy who you are so that she can tell you what you may be eligible for, and then you can decide what you want. You know, so, Beautifully said. Can I clone you and have you in my office? <laughs> um, so no, now you're... as a bonus, because I asked that great question, I want, I want to talk about, eight, Grace, can I have her talk about aid and dep- attendance for a few minutes? Go ahead. Well, so, I just I want to oh, 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 excuse okay, me for interrupting. Ahead. I just wanted uh, to add to what you just said. You're right. It's there's a lot of bureaucracy out there, and sometimes when veterans get um, they Google, is this available to me or whatever? There's a lot of okay. I'm just going to say this. A lot of gobbly. You have to get through to the minutia because that you it may say one thing, but it might mean something different. And we have the resources to get to, to say, okay, what does this actually mean? Because I have a veteran here that I think I really can help, but it says one thing and it might mean another. And I, do, I certainly don't want to um, put them down or promise them something that they clearly are not eligible for. So, yes, I mean, I, I feel for, I mean, even when I get on this, I just like, oh my God, I thought I knew what I knew, but now I'm not certain. So I need to call somebody at VA just to get clarification to help this veteran. So, so, so right. I'm, I'm going to use this as a segue into my into my, my aid and attendance question, because I remember listening to this wonderful woman named Patty Surveys, who does a lot of work helping folks with aid, qualifying for aid and attendance. And she was doing this seminar with me and she said, you know, so in order to qualify, you need to show that you need assistance with two of the activities of daily living or some other things. But she said, for ex- but don't assume that you know what that means. Right. She said, for example, eating. Right. You think if you, you, you hear you need assistance with eating, so does someone need to put a spoon to your mouth? 
if you if you if you're having a steak and you need assistance cutting up the steak, that's assistance with eating. And I remember the crowd going, "Oh, you know." So I mean, it's just a it's a classic. You know, you you you, you don't you don't want to assume that you understand the way into these the into these programs. Now, having said that, can you talk a little bit about aid and attendance? Because I know that. Aid and attendance is often thought of by a lot of folks as, as really being only about if you're in assisted living. I think it's most commonly used if you're in assisted living. I remember this one person telling me something like 75% of all people in assisted living at that time, that was about five or six years ago, are, are on the aid and attendance benefit, right? Because, because it, it provides that extra supplement because these assisted, assisted livings tend to be so expensive. But it's it's a great program for people who who have issues at home also, you know, who just need some assistance because otherwise they, you know, and they're at home, they're at home. So can you just talk about it a little bit? Yeah. And, and um, once again, I want I want it to be the intro so that it so that they'll come to your office now if they want more stuff, right? So you may be getting buried as a result of this. But. That's what I'm there for. You know, that's exactly what I'm there for. Um, aid and attendance is a wonderful federal benefit that can help families care for a loved one, either living at home or as a supplement to help them in a nursing facility. Now, it, it, I, I don't want to say that it's, it's going to solve everything because it's also tied to income levels, what you don't and don't have. You have to be making X amount of dollars before you can really apply because they go through this whole list of money situations. Um, that's one part of it. Then you go through the daily, the assisted daily living things. For instance, um, does it need help? Does he or she need help bathing? Do they, can they put toothpaste on their toothbrush? Can they get it from a chair, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the forms are incredible to fill out, but you need to have someone assist you. It's, let me rephrase that. It'll be helpful to have somebody assist you because two heads are better than one in this situation. And you have to be ready to show your income levels, your, um, your assets, if you have any CDs, IRAs, or how much money you have. And this is minus your permanent residence now. This does not count your permanent residence, but it's a whole myriad of things that you need to get and present to them to see if you qualify for aid and attendance. Um, Case in point, on a personal level, I went, I did some forms for my mother. Uh, my father had passed away. She was living on her own, and we wanted to see if she would qualify. Unfortunately, she didn't. But then I helped a, another senior couple up the street, and I did get them aid in attendance because their income levels were such to a point. Um, he, he was in the Navy, and he definitely needed a lot of assistance with the, um, the ADLs, the daily living. And we were lucky enough to get them put through, but it takes, and it's not instantaneous. It can take six to eight months to get approved and to get this put through. So if anybody's thinking this is going to be the golden ticket, you know, be prepared that it can take a while to get this put through, but I can't express upon you enough about working with someone to be sure you have all the right forms, all the right material, because the VA will drill down. And if you don't answer one thing specifically, they're just going to, throw it back at you and you have to start all over again or get more information. So Kathy, this is, goes back to what you said right at the beginning. They've got to call you. If they think of, if they're thinking they might need something, call, call, right? Kathy, thank, thank you so much for doing this. It was really great having you on grace. Once again, you keep getting these great people to come and visit us and <laughs> folks, I hope this was useful to you once again. Uh, and, and please let us know if there are other people you'd like to see on our show. And thanks very much for watching this installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much.